November 1st, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Today I come to make clear some facts that Satan has covered in his confusion. Evil has taken charge of the liberal political party in your nation. In so doing, it has made humanitarian issues into political footballs. You have one party that has genuine concern for the welfare of the people. The other is motivated by outside forces, political power, and ambition. This nation is my tool in the world and must not be reduced to what you call a banana republic. Such a nation as that tosses leaders in and out of office at the mere whims of a few. I have saved this nation throughout history, holding her above deceit and hidden agendas, bringing her to victory over foreign enemies, making of her a sign of truth amidst confusion. All of this, all of my divine intervention, is under attack now by those in the government and outside of this nation whose desire is to weaken this nation, making her vulnerable to world influences and less independent. The ultimate goal is the one world government. This war is in hearts, but is more crucial than any military conflict. I must continue speaking here to bring light into the fog of confusion which is attempting to settle upon my nation of truth. I urge you then to be united in me, in my will. Make this once again one nation under me. Renounce all who oppose this. Recognize the direction your current president is leading you. Unite behind him. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 2, 19 through 22. So then you are no longer strangers or and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 2nd, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, please understand, the only way that evil can succeed is to disguise good as evil. This is what is going on in your country today. Every just and good effort of this president is immediately countered with some conjured up attempt to discredit him. This is a symptom of the way evil is working throughout the world. My will is to hold this nation apart from any one world order. That way it can be my instrument of good all over the world. Politics is fast becoming Satan's attempt to grasp control and to thwart my will. He can only succeed through ambitious hearts. How much better it is to be ambitious for heaven instead of any power on earth. A note is given to read Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hid 
with Christ in God. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 3rd, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, My continued presence here at this site serves to strengthen the remnant. It is the remnant which will carry the tradition of faith forward. Do not waste precious time on doubts. Just believe and be a warrior of truth. Whenever there are conflicting opinions which bind up the progress of truth, you have Satan in your midst. He is confusion and in the darkness of many opinions. He promotes untruth in ways that man could not conceive of. Be on guard against anyone who has a driving self-ambition as his motivation. This is how the evil one encourages his plans and divides good. I cannot urge you enough to be united in the truth, the truth of my commandments and the truth of my justice. Choose the eternity I choose for you, which is eternal joy in my presence. Do not be persuaded against this path by any false leader who does not promote the welfare of the people or my kingdom on earth. There are some leaders that do not deserve their position of leadership and whom I do not support. I call each of you to look carefully as to whom you follow. Leadership is always a battleground between good and evil. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 17. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 3rd, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, I have come to help you understand the ways that Satan attacks different souls. He sees all the strengths and weaknesses of each soul. Therefore, he knows what inroad to use to gain entry to the heart. He knows how to use the soul's vulnerability to place evil thoughts and desires in a heart that is on the path of righteousness. He uses carnal desires, love of the allurements of the world, any illness or tendency to an illness, be it physical or mental, to gain his foothold. This is not to say illnesses and carnal weakness or even worldly desires are all evil. I use every cross to gain power in the world. Satan convolutes many of my efforts, turning a potentially worthy sacrifice into his port of entry. It is the degree with which each soul is aware of his own weaknesses that make him a worthy opponent against evil or a potential victim of Satan's ploys. Every soul needs to be on guard as to evil activity near or around him. The evil one can turn the best efforts at holiness into a trap. Very often the trap is self-righteousness or discouragement. 
It is free will choices that determine the difference between good and evil. Never presume to be a worthy opponent of Satan. Prayer and sacrifice are the best weapons. November 4th, 2019 Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, in your spiritual journey into my paternal heart, it is most important that you recognize your weaknesses. It is only in this way you can be strengthened by overcoming them. Weaknesses are whatever opposes the virtues. The ultimate goal, of course, is self-abandonment. Weaknesses in any virtue stem from pride. This is why it is most important to pray for true humility. Humility helps you along the path of self-abandonment. Those who die to self and live only for others are deepest in my paternal heart. It is only by a movement of your free will you can choose this path. I am awaiting each soul and preserving a place in my patriarchal heart for each one of you. Understand, then, how important self-knowledge is. A note is given to read Hebrews chapter 5, 1 through 4. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is bound to offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not take the honor upon himself, but he is called by God, just as Aaron was. Another note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, 21-22. If any one purifies himself from what is ignoble, then he will be a vessel for noble use, consecrated, and useful to the master of the house, ready for any good work. So shun youthful passions and aim at righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call upon the Lord from a pure heart. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 4th, 2019 Once again I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, I will impart my next apocalyptic blessing on November 18th. Make it known. November 5th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, The gift of time is given to the world so that souls have the opportunity to love me and to love their neighbor as themselves. These messages are given to the world to enhance the gift of time, and to draw souls into my paternal heart. These days, however, time is being used to separate the heart of men from me and from my commandments. The present moment will never return to you. You will never be given the same grace of the moment to use towards your own salvation and the salvation of others. See what a gift each moment is, and use it to the fullest. Choose to be united to my holy divine will in each moment. Renounce your weaknesses and your sins in an effort to please me. 
When you love me and desire to please me, you are living in my will. I love each soul in each present moment. It grieves me when souls do not even acknowledge my existence or my interest in them. As I give to you the gift of time, return my favor by using it wisely. Use each moment to improve your relationship with me. A note is given to read Galatians chapter 6, 7 through 10. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all men, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 6th, 2019 Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, The quickest way to deeper holiness is to accept whatever the present moment gives you as my will for you. Difficulties are permitted by me to increase your patience and trust in my will. Nothing happens in any present moment that I am unaware of. It is in your acceptance of all the present moment brings that your purification and sanctification unfold. Just as I share the difficulties in life with you, I also celebrate every victory with you, great and small. No one walks the journey through life that I have not created and known about since the beginning of time. It is what is in each one's heart which helps him or hinders him in cooperating with each present moment grace. I never abandon any soul. It is the soul that abandons me. It is the soul who chooses his own eternity, heaven or hell. Disbelief in this is not an exoneration. Therefore, understand that it is each soul that chooses his eternity. Pray for the grace to accept my will in every present moment and in all situations. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 17 and 20. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, always and for everything giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 7th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, The key to the doorway of sanctity and deeper personal holiness is selflessness. The more charity within the heart, the greater the strides in holiness. Ask for the grace to remove the shackles on your heart which bind you to the allurements of the world. These shackles are physical appearance, power, money, and authority. Indeed, 
anything which enhances the soul's comforts or status in the world. The world as you know it is passing away. It will be replaced by the new Jerusalem, which is my kingdom to come, and the victory of my divine will. Pray for the enlightenment as to what form of disordered self-love is holding you back. Once you are purified of these chains on your heart, happiness and peace will be yours. These truths I give you out of my profound love for each soul. A note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, 21-22. If anyone purifies himself from what is ignoble, then he will be a vessel for noble use, consecrated and useful to the master of the house, ready for any good work. So shun youthful passions and aim at righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call upon the Lord from a pure heart. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 8th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, The days that lie ahead will be shortened for the sake of the elect. Many will be misled by the doctrines of demons, which is already in progress. Sound leadership will be compromised in an effort to please people, not me. Power and authority will be placed in unworthy hands. Many of these things the wise can discern to be at hand already. For these reasons, I am protecting my church by merit of the formation of a remnant faithful. This small remnant will be the one true church upon earth. Mary, protectress of the faith, will preside over this small flock. Therefore have hope in these words I give to you today. Pray for all those who have and will oppose me. Pray for this faith-filled remnant. A note is given to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 13-15. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you from the beginning to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. Another note is given to read 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 2. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by giving heed to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons through the pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 9th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, These times are given over to evil. This is so because man lives in the present moment only for himself and not to please me in any way. Human pleasures will never be able to compare to a close relationship with me. I desire with all my heart to be closer to man, every man. Satan, however, has taken this desire out of the heart of the world. Worldly concerns are always a part of every present moment. Man gets lost in these concerns mainly through lack of trust in my provision. To know me is to understand my love for you, which is perfect in every way. It is this same love that calls the sinner to repentance. 
It is the same love that helps each soul through every difficulty. Prayer is the way to increase your love and your trust in me. Prayer changes things. Therefore, today, I ask each one of my children to use the present moment as an opportunity to come closer to me through trustful prayer. Any moment can be sanctified if you choose to surrender your day to me each morning. Then your whole day is a prayer. A note is given to read Philippians chapter 4. 4-7. through Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 10th, 2019 Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, These messages will be your refuge in times of trouble anxiety, and even the hour of my wrath. For now, I desire each one of you draw closer to me, as a child draws closer to his father in times of uncertainty. It is your relationship with me that comforts you and protects you in your every hour of need. Have I not chosen each one of you who listens to these messages to be an apostle, of holy love? Yes, each of you is an evangelizer of love by merit of your everyday lives. I provide your every need and situation to do so. The ones you come in contact with are the ones I have sent you in that present moment. These are the ones you must give witness to as a true apostle of love would. It is my call to my remnant to unite spiritually in the truth. Let the truth of my commandments lead you, guide you. A note is given to read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. But he who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Another note is given to read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 13 through 15. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I believed, and so I spoke. We too believe, and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, It may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 11th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, these days the mass media has been taken over by evil and promotes its evil agenda. The average citizen cannot ferret out the truth and is easily misled by his misguided trust in the media in general. This is how the media uses its power and influence to promote evils such as the proposed impeachment of your president. Without the force of the media behind this movement, it could not even be considered as a possibility. Evil uses the media to paint pictures of distortion over the truth. It is in this way they gain power in the heart of the world. 
the apostleship of holy love has not escaped the evil influences of mass media. Thousands more would believe if the truth of this mission was supported in the public eye. Those strictly opposed to the truth of this mission have used their influence to sway the media to negatively influence public opinion in regards to the good fruits of my mission here. This is the age of untruths in hearts and in the world. Ask your angels to stand guard over your hearts so as not to be misled by the mass media. A note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 5. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be urgent in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, and exhort, be unfailing in patience and in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be steady, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 12th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, once again, I caution you against any sin that takes root in your heart. When you are sin-free, your hearts are as white as snow. When you have chosen sin, your hearts are difficult for me to look at. I look only at hearts. I do not care about physical appearances or any accomplishment in the world. The greatest saints are those who live only for others. Do not take pride in your spiritual journey. This in itself is sinful. Nor should you compare your spirituality to anyone else's. Just place your hearts in mine, and I will place my heart in yours. Use time as your passport to heaven. In that way you sanctify the present moment. Never give in to discouragement, thinking that I am far distant from you, and do not notice your temptations or your attempts in personal holiness. I oversee every present moment in each one's life. I can do this as I am omnipotent, therefore omnipresent. Be assured of my eternal love for you, and out of love for me, work out your salvation so that we can be together for all eternity. A note is given to read Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Scripture verse asked to be read by God the Father. November 13th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, when man wants everything his own way and does not accept the present moment as it is presented to him, it is then he separates himself from me and from my will. Oftentimes, it is not apparent why certain things happen or why certain crosses are permitted. It is then the soul needs to patiently wait on my timing, trusting that my will is always towards the welfare of his soul. 
Some souls have much more difficult journeys to travel than others. You do not see now how eternal rewards are measured out and with what precision my will interacts with time. This is why trust in my will merits you peace amidst any difficulty. My call to you today is to immerse your hearts in my will so that my divine peace permeates your entire being. Whatever is happening in the present moment is my will, my permitting will, or my ordaining will. Unite the present moment to my divine will. A note is given to read Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord, give heed to my groaning. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not sojourn with you. The boastful way not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors bloodthirsty and deceitful men. But I, through the abundance of your merciful love, will enter your house. I will worship toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. Their heart is destruction. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out. For they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. And do defend them, that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. Another note is given to read Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 14th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, the first step on your journey into my paternal heart is self-abandonment. The last step before the doorway to my heart opens is self-abandonment. The soul has to lose himself to find me. The soul that can do this is at peace, for he has no concerns in his worldly existence. During this age when the mass media is king, it is a call to complete conversion of the heart, to abandon self to me. Hidden within this call is the need to trust, to hope, and most of all to love. The soul must replace his disordered love of self and his creature comforts with love of me. My provision is the only thing that makes any sense in a world nurtured by consumerism. Do not let the mass media be your guide to peace and happiness. Allow me my rightful place in dominion over your heart. A note is given to read Philippians chapter 2, 14 through 16. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, 
that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 15th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, the depth of your journey into my paternal heart is reflected in the depth of your self-abandonment. If you are deep in my heart, you will not be concerned about what lies ahead. Nothing in the future is beyond my provision for you. Therefore, your trust in me is one with your self-abandonment. So many read these messages with an eye towards the future tribulation and what it will hold. You are prepared for any event if you are prepared in your hearts to trust in me. Your trust is only as deep as your holy love is deep. So, we go back to the beginning with holy love. Read the messages already given to you on holy love and the Church of Atonement. Those who trust are steeped in sacrifice for themselves and others. The smallest sacrifice is as worthy as the love with which it is offered. A note is given to read 1 Peter chapter 4, 7-8. through 8. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, keep sane and sober for your prayers. Above all, hold unfailing your love for one another, since love covers a multitude of sins. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 15th, 2019. Jesus says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. When I give you the gift of time, you reciprocate by giving me the gift of time which you spend before the blessed sacrament, my real presence. I never tire of your presence before me. I envelop your heart with the light of my love. You are removed from problems or sorrow when you are before me. It is so with anyone who comes before me to surrender to my love. November 16th, 2019 once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, the kingdom of my divine will is all around you. Until my will is done and accepted in all hearts, my victory will not be complete. To accept my will Souls must open to my will in any and all present moments. This is why I visit earth with my apocalyptic blessing each month. This blessing helps the soul accept change and adversity with peace. Certainly, in the future, souls will have an even greater need to discern good versus evil as evil will be seated in high places. Already you can glimpse this happening. Those who accept my apocalyptic blessing will be so much the wiser in choosing whom to listen to and to obey. As deeply as each heart accepts this blessing will be commensurate to the depth of its effects on the soul. This apocalyptic blessing is my will for this generation. 
A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Another note is given to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 9-12. through 12. The coming of the lawless one by the activity of Satan will be with all power and with pretended signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are to perish, because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends upon them a strong delusion to make them believe what is false, so that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 17th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, once again, I come to help you understand the necessity and importance of my apocalyptic blessing. Satan is deceiving many, as he has infiltrated the hearts of many leaders, both in church and world politics. These are leaders in prominent positions, positions of great and heretofore trusted influence. From this vantage point, many aspects of church and world politics will and have been influenced. This is due to the fact that his evil presence has not been recognized. Therefore I come with this blessing once monthly. It is the grace of this blessing that will help my children to recognize the truth. This blessing helps you to look beyond title and authority and to be able to perceive the path you are being persuaded to follow. False signs and wonders will be seen for what they are in the light of the truth of this blessing. As time wears on, the importance of this blessing will intensify. A note is given to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 9-12. through 12. The coming of the lawless one by the activity of Satan will be with all power and with pretended signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are to perish, because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore God sends upon them a strong delusion, to make them believe what is false, so that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 18th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, I have summoned you here tonight to impart to you my apocalyptic blessing. It is so powerful that even if you send your angel here tonight, he will carry many of the graces attendant to this blessing back to you. This blessing will help you to see the truth when confusion washes over the conscience of mankind. The deeper your belief in my apocalyptic blessing, the greater the depth of grace you will receive. November 18th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. 
He says, My children, you have not yet experienced the full force of the apocalypse. This blessing is my way of preparing you for what is to come and what is already started. With this blessing, if you receive it with a faith-filled heart, you will be able to discern good leadership versus evil. I'm extending to you tonight my apocalyptic blessing. November 19th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, I am the Lord your God, creator of the universe and of all life that abides therein. Only I can speak to you as I choose to today. The world is on the brink of the apocalypse. The Antichrist is in the world and stands poised, ready to mount his throne. Many signs and events in the world now are apocalyptic in nature. The world has but one or two more steps to take to pass completely into the apocalypse. Nation after nation will collapse economically as their main source of revenue fails. Those who do not accept me as their God will become more influential in the world. All of nature will seem to turn against man. True faith will be more and more persecuted until it is truly a remnant. The church will survive, but on a smaller scale. The spirit of ambition will overtake important leadership, compromising decisions which will affect millions. So you see, there is more deterioration that will occur as the world steps full force into the apocalypse. This is why my apocalyptic blessing is so important. It assists people in determining the truth and to obeying only the truth in the midst of ever-increasing turmoil. A note is given to read Luke, chapter 21, 10 through 11. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 20th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, when my apocalyptic blessing rests upon faith-filled hearts, it is a victory in truth. This blessing is a weapon against the lies of Satan, through which he is trying to take charge of the whole world. Only if you recognize the difference between truth and Satan's lies can you remain sure-footed along the path of righteousness. This blessing is my way of supporting those who desire salvation and of pointing out the dangers along the way. Once the apocalyptic blessing is received, the soul will not easily be led astray by blind obedience without recognition as to where he is being led. He will hold errant authority figures accountable for their actions. He will be able to differentiate 
between sound leadership and self-seeking, ambitious leadership. Many truths which are difficult to accept will be accepted. Children, I am your support during these difficult times, even frightening times. A note is given to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, 1 through 3. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed on and triumph as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from evil. November 21st, 2019, the Feast of the Presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Dear children, once you receive my apocalyptic blessing, you carry it with you the rest of your life. This is one important step in being prepared for the apocalypse in the event you are on earth during the unfolding of these events. The subsequent steps of preparation are in the heart of each soul. Be purified in holy love. Live as true apostles of love, always pleasing me in your thoughts, words, and actions. Be united in holy love and do not oppose each other. Live in accord with my commandments. These steps of preparation seem simple, but in reality it is very difficult to remain purified in my sight. The souls thus prepared will have less to contend with during the dark days of my wrath. Entrust your hearts to me, now, during these times of preparation. Do not vary in your commitment. I, the Lord your God, am keeping a close watch. A note is given to read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Strive for peace with all men, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Scripture verse asked to be read by God the Father. November 22nd, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, these days are perilous for those who want to persevere in the faith. Truth is attacked on every front, and sin is rarely a consideration. This is the bad fruit of not loving me enough. Souls these days love and respect their own free will more than me. This is why you do not have peace in the world. You can make bold attempts at peace talks, but unless I am a part of these talks, you will fail. Promises are not kept and respected in hearts that do not embrace holy love. This is also the reason so many marriages fail. Fear my wrath, but love me. If you love someone with a sincere heart, you will try to please him. You will have the utmost regard for his wishes. I speak here today to call souls back into my arms and away from so much disordered self-love. This alone would stop the world from its collision course with disaster. A note is given to read Jude chapter 17 verse 23. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, In the last time there will be scoffers, following their own ungodly passions. It is these who set up divisions, worldly people, devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, build yourselves up 
on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And convince some who doubt. Save some by snatching them out of the fire. On some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Scripture verse asked to be read by God the Father. November 23rd, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, once again, I tell you, your journey on earth must have one focus, that being earning your place in heaven. I have come to confide many things to you, but this is the most important. If you focus on your heavenly reward, all things will fall into place. If whole nations would live according to this message, the future of the world would be changed forever. Motives in hearts would adjust to please me in all ways. There would be no more rivalry or selfish use of the world's goods. Goals would be in accord with my will. Furthermore, my will would be accepted with the respect it deserves. Politics would once again be honest and fair. Attacking personalities would never be an issue. All life would be respected from conception to natural death. Sin would be recognized for what it is. This is how it will be in the New Jerusalem. Everyone will have one purpose only, to earn a high place in heaven. A note is given to read Galatians chapter 6, 7 through 10. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all men, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 24th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, My children, each one of you receives during his lifetime all the graces needed to reach eternal paradise. It is the soul's response to the very small graces that brings him greater more important graces. Grace builds upon grace. Of course, the greatest grace of all is acceptance of the truth. With this acceptance comes belief in my commandments. The soul must believe in my commandments in order to obey them. Surrender to the truth is the key that opens the door to personal holiness and salvation. If the soul truly surrenders to the truth, he will love me with his whole heart. In order to travel to any foreign land, you need a passport. I remind you once again today that your passport to heaven is love of me above all else and love of neighbor as self. Through a life in this holy love, heaven is yours. When you believe in me, you also trust in me. Trust that I continually offer salvific grace to the most hardened of sinners. To me, 
nothing is impossible. A note is given to read Romans chapter 2, 6 through 8. For he will render to every man according to his works, to those who by patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are factious and do not obey the truth, but obey wickedness, there will be wrath and fury. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 24th, 2019. Jesus says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. I tell you solemnly, the most important moment in anyone's life is the present moment. It is in that moment the soul chooses to be holy, not to sin and to please me, or he chooses error, sin, and to please himself above love of me. Free will is such a great gift, but is often abused through disordered self-love. Yet until the soul takes his last breath, free will governs the soul's eternal destiny. November 25th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, I wish to speak to you today about obedience, perhaps a touchy subject. There is obedience which I dictate, obedience to my commandments. There is obedience to all civil law. These types of obedience must be blind obedience, that is, without scrutiny. But some forms of obedience must, of necessity, be challenged. Case in point is obedience to authorities who opposed this mission before it even began to bloom. Had this messenger blindly obeyed, millions of prayers would have been left unsaid. Innocent lives would have been lost in the womb. Many truths would have never been exposed. This is why I continue to say to you, you must pay heed to the consequences of your obedience or disobedience. For this is the age of Satan's confusion. He uses seemingly good to attain his nasty purposes. Obedience has and continues to be at times a form of control. You must pray for discernment as to who and what to obey. Too often, Satan gains control of situations, people, and institutions through blind obedience. A note is given to read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brethren, love one another earnestly from the heart. Scripture verse asked to be read by God the Father. November 26th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, as the holiday of Thanksgiving approaches in your country, I tell you solemnly that your nation, for the most part, does not know how to be thankful. They see all their advances in technology, in medicine, and in a stabilization of the economy as the result of their own ingenuity. Thanksgiving is about giving thanks to me, the Lord and Creator of all. No nation, no person, can prosper outside of my provision. Everything is given and allowed through my generosity. Appease my paternal heart by acknowledging my loving provision. In heaven, the angels and the saints celebrate this holiday always 
not just once a year. They see how everything is dependent upon my divine will. They acknowledge with what love I provide every need, great or small, for all my children. To live in such a way brings greater blessings upon the soul and the world in general. Prepare for the holiday ahead with a generous heart, full of thanks for my provision. I see your every need, spiritual, physical, and emotional. My generosity will not be outdone. A note is given to read 1 John chapter 3, 21 through 22. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and we receive from Him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 27th, 2019, the Feast of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. Our Lady comes as she appears on the Miraculous Medal. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, today I come to remind you that the greatest miracle is your perseverance in faith. The many ways Satan has undermined your faith have made faith seem unnecessary, even old-fashioned. I come today to congratulate faith-filled hearts. You must be the light in the world of darkness. Be brave in making your faith apparent to others. It is in this way others will recognize your calm and peaceful demeanor and your determined actions in righteousness. I desire you have recourse to me in every difficulty and in every decision. I am your protectress and your refuge in any trial. You face no difficulty alone. Remember, I am your mother, defender of the truth. When the enemy tries to confuse you with his lies, I will help you find the truth once again. Pray every day for continued perseverance in the true faith. A note is given to read Philippians chapter 2, 14 through 16. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Scripture verses asked to be read by Our Lady. November 28th, 2019, Thanksgiving Day. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children, today I celebrate with you this day that is set aside for Thanksgiving. I, too, am thankful for many things. I am thankful that my son persevered until the end of his cross. I am thankful for all believers and for their efforts in evangelizing the truth. I am grateful for this opportunity to speak to you through these messages. I am thankful for every soul who allows me to have dominion over his heart. I am grateful for those who trust in my provision trusting always that my provision is perfect in their lives. These are the ones who do not fear, but trust always in my perfect intervention in their lives. I am very thankful for those who suffer great crosses in submission to my will. I can bring many souls to their salvation by such efforts. Every cross has its merit. In this truth, realize how much I am thankful for the mystical Church of Atonement. 
I am blessing the heart of your nation today, and in so doing, helping it to return to its founding precepts, the greatest of which is trust in me. A note is given to read Psalm 5, 11 through 12. But let all who take refuge in thee rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. And do thou defend them, that those who love thy name may exult in thee. For thou didst bless the righteous, O Lord. Thou dost cover him with favor as with a shield. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 29th, 2019. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Children in every present moment continue to be thankful for my provision, which is always perfect. Do not challenge my generosity through doubts. Remember, I am the creator of all. Let us pray from the heart for the conversion of the heart of the world. Satan has his nefarious plans that he is inspiring in evil hearts towards impressive upheavals. He uses good people by leading them off the track of righteousness through selfish ambition. Then they are no longer righteous, but his evil instruments. Therefore, it is so important that you do not allow respect of office or authority to lead you astray. Stand firm in obedience to my commandments. Do not be surprised at who is labeled dishonest, and rightfully so, in the future. False allegations against the righteous will flourish but in the long run prove to be the undoing of the accusers. Stay close to the truth. My apocalyptic blessing will protect the truth in your hearts. It will be given again on December 9th. A note is given to read 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1-4. through 4. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all men, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, godly and respectful in every way. This is good, and it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Have nothing to do with godless and silly myths. Train yourself in godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. November 30th, 2019, the Feast of St. Andrew the Apostle. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, please record this for the sake of all who will listen. As I stated, my next apocalyptic blessing will be December 9th. I will not impart this blessing again until April. November 30th, 2019, the Feast of St. Andrew the Apostle. Once again, I, Maureen, see a great flame that I have come to know as the heart of God the Father. He says, Today I wish to speak to you about gift giving. In and of itself, this is not bad, and, if practiced in a self-giving way, can be a great grace. The season of Christmas becomes convoluted only when materialism becomes the focus instead of the birth of my son. 
This is where the mass media plays a role. Consumerism is lauded by the media as the source of all joy and happiness, especially during the holiday season. If the soul loses sight of the real meaning of Christmas, his joy will be short-lived and superficial at best. I am calling you to a deeper sense of joy, a joy which brings peace of heart. This is a joy which comes to you in proportion to the faith you hold in your heart. The ones who hold true faith in their hearts and believe wholeheartedly that my son was born in the stable in Bethlehem have the greatest gift of all. No material goods of the world can bring greater joy. Gift-giving, in a material sense, can be an expression of, of human love, one for the other. This is good and acceptable in my eyes. However, do not allow it to be the full focus of your heart as you celebrate the Feast of Christmas. Prepare your hearts with charitable works for the less fortunate. This takes the focus off self and allows you to focus on the real meaning of Christmas. Then the birth of my son will have a place in your hearts. A note is given to read Luke chapter 2, 6 through 7. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Scripture verses asked to be read by God the Father. <laughs> 